Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. I briefly touched on this in my previous video, but I've seen quite a lot of discourse over the last year or so regarding Pinterest and whether or not it is actually detrimental to people developing their personal style and if it's making everyone just look the same. I don't have any beef with Pinterest, okay? I use it, it's fun. I don't think it should be that serious. But on the other hand, I can kind of see where they're coming from in the sense that once they know you like something, the algorithm is obviously gonna keep pushing a similar sort of thing on you to the point where you're seeing the same outfit formula over and over again, you're wearing it as well, and then it feels so oversaturated that you're gonna get sick of it and move on to the next thing. But I mean, really to a certain degree, is that not how the trend cycle has always worked? Obviously it is sped up since we are consuming so much more content online now. So not just Pinterest, but social media in general, it never hurts to take a bit of a break or pause from, or at the very least, just switch up with how you're interacting with it. My main issue is that sometimes it comes across as a little bit preachy and then they don't actually offer a solution on where you could be finding inspiration from instead. And if asked, they'll just give a vague answer of, oh, go out and observe your local surroundings. Nine times out of 10, that means they live in either New York or London and they're going to a space that has a very creative scene. Obviously not all of us live in trendy cities and honestly, not all of us are able or enjoy leaving the house. So today I thought it could be fun to get our creative juices flowing and try and put together some outfits inspired by a list of miscellaneous things. I have always loved taking inspiration from TV and film characters. Sometimes it does feel like you have exhausted all options on your current streaming services though, which is where today's video sponsor really comes in clutch, award-winning VPN Surfshark, which allows you to access content from around the world and protect yourself while you're browsing online. Surfshark is a virtual private network available as an app and a browser extension. You can download it now via the link in the description box and then you too will be able to quickly and easily change your location settings and then instantly have access to a ton of content that isn't usually available in your region. From anime to teen TV, K-dramas, drag race, you name it, your options are endless now. And of course, even though we've reached a new year, it's as important as ever to make sure you're browsing securely online. Surfshark ensure this through various methods, including adding an extra layer of protection when you're using public Wi-Fi and by preventing companies and bots from tracking your personal information. I've been using Surfshark for years. I love that they offer unlimited devices under just one account. You can get an exclusive deal with my code Spotlight and to celebrate the new year, there's a limited time offer of up to six extra months for free. And since Surfshark offer a 30 day money back guarantee, you can try it all risk free via the link on screen and down below in the description box. I feel like it should be pretty safe to say that amongst us here today, probably a lot of us have an addiction to blind boxes, okay? I know it's not good, trust me, I'm trying to cut back myself, but at this point, you've already bought the little guy, why not get your money's worth, choose your emotional support character of the day, and have a little twinning moment. Well, actually, no, not necessarily twinning, but just matching a similar sort of vibe. My issue is that I have absolutely no allegiance or loyalty to any particular character, so the hardest part of it all is just picking who actually gets to come along with me that day. There really is an overwhelming amount to choose from. Let me know if you have a particular bias to any brand. I feel like Sony Angels is what I see the most. Surprisingly, one of the only brands I don't have any of. After careful consideration, I've actually selected my first ever Pop Mart purchase. I have such a soft spot for the Hirono series. The main goal was to stick to the same neutral color palette. So for the base, I opted to layer in the same muted khaki green shade. But of course, the star of the show was the bare details and I don't have it in the same brown color, but I do have this cream bear beanie and then also the teddy backpack. I'm telling you, if you're going on a solo date or something, or even just going to get fit pics by yourself, you will definitely feel significantly less lonely if you have a little buddy to match with. Really styling an outfit is just another form of decorating. So why not take inspiration from other forms of design as well? It could be taking inspo from things like your favorite home decor, architecture, graphic design, nail art, set designs or cake decorating. I mean, really a lot of these things are just constantly taking inspiration from each other anyway. So why not also get in on the action? When I was listing out the options before, as soon as cake decorating came out of my mouth, this came to my mind. And I don't think this is actually supposed to be a cake, by the way, I'm pretty sure it's like water 
Magic Fountain sort of situation, but I mean, come on. The details are very much giving that. Even down to the way the ruffles sit on the hem, it literally looks like the piping. Realistically, it's already done all the hard work for us, but of course, that's not gonna stop me from layering. I'm so in love with this sock and shoe combo, especially the stripes. I feel like almost gives it that birthday candle effect. There's absolutely no reasoning behind this shirt other than the fact that it was the best color match that I had. Now I'm trying to decide whether I wanna go full caricature vibes and go with this strawberry beret. Obviously not as ideal as cherry on top. Um, honestly, this brand probably has cherry inspired cake, you name it, she'll have it. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm just gonna go for it because I can't be bothered doing my hair up in some sort of style and adding ribbons. I'm sorry, but to me, this is just so stinking cute. I feel like I should be some sort of birthday cake version in the strawberry shortcake universe. More costumey than I'm sure a lot of people like to dress, but you know what? It's nice to have some fun every now and then. I feel like a somewhat untapped form of inspiration is photos that predate the social media era. And I'm not just talking necessarily from celebrities from past decades, but of actual real people. And even if you're really trying to go with absolutely no online influences and you don't want to source these sort of photos on something like a Pinterest, you could always try going through old family photo albums, pictures of your parents, your grandparents, or even photos of you when you were a kid. Often when you see fashion related street interviews and they ask the question of who's your celebrity style icon, you see a lot of the same names mentioned, Bella Hadid, Rihanna, Harry Styles, all for good reason and totally valid. But if you wanted to switch things up a little bit, honestly, the true style icons, I feel like their style really transcends time. Like if I see pictures of Jane Birkin, Chloe Sevigny, Alexa Chung, it doesn't feel like their outfit has walked out of a time capsule. If someone was wearing that today, I wouldn't bat an eyelid. I also really like the concept of looking outside your usual circle and turning to like, different celebrities that aren't usually on your radar. For example, if you usually are just all about like the Jenners and the Kardashians, why not have a look at what's going on in the world of K-pop styling? You never know, even if it's not something that typically resonates with your style. I don't know if it's just me because I don't live in America, feel free to let me know. But personally, I think there needs to be more hype surrounding the NBA tunnel picks because my God, is there some fits? There's some good accounts that do roundups of the best fits from that week. Personally though, SGA on top always. And even if you're not a basketball fan, you may recognize him. He attended the Met Gala last year and in my opinion, had one of the best looks for men's fashion. Other personal favorites that I like to follow would have to be Jordan Clarkson and Vando. Even if it's not a look I'd wear head to toe, I feel like there's something about the vibes that land in the same realm. And I think it's just that playfulness. So I got this jumper recently and let's be real, it is not my typical style by any means, but for some reason I was so drawn to it on the website. I got it in the mail. A few weeks later, I see this post on Instagram and I was like, oh, I didn't even realize I was being influenced by D-Lo this whole time. So cute on. I currently just have my comfy shorts on still, um, but I was kind of thinking black shorts, just a dressier option. Honestly, they're probably gonna look exactly the same on camera though. I'm really not sure because I would usually style this with more of a flowy skirt, but I wanted to try and channel those preppy vibes. However, I don't want to commit to a pan. I feel like Nikhil Alexander Walker is almost always rocking shorts though. And I love that he teams them with the signature scrunchy socks. I don't know how, but somehow it feels very me whilst also being something I would never usually reach for. For accessories, I was thinking of adding on some glasses. I have kind of like a briefcase sort of bag because his style gives me kind of like professor influence sort of. And then also some headphones because you know, Maybe it's game day. No, because it is so cute and also comfortable. I can't wait until the weather cools down because it is perfect autumn attire. I don't know if you're ready for this one because it is truly some groundbreaking stuff, but nature. I know it is so cliche, but I felt like it still had to be said. There's just so many beautiful color combos that can be found. And this doesn't just have to be landscape, but of course animals as well. And I love some of the TikToks I've seen recently, people doing series dressing like their cat or even doing their makeup to match their dog. I wanted to offer something more on the simple side and the shape of these flowers reminded me of my favorite shape of dress, the baby doll. Since this is just new to me this summer, I haven't really had a proper chance to play around with different outfit combos. So I thought this was the perfect opportunity to to pair it with the red tights. And I love pairing it with the same shade of shoe. It makes your legs look that much longer. Literally since the inception of this channel, I have loved styling red. So whenever I go back to my basics, it makes me so happy. This is one of the ones that I think is traditionally most linked to fashion and that is dolls. 100% with certainty can guarantee you that red shaped my style into what it is today. Platforms, 
theme dressing, the accessories. Barbie, of course, had an insane year last year, but she's been serving us looks for decades. The doll of choice at the moment, though, definitely seems to be Blythe dolls, which I feel like does make total sense, though, because their aesthetic is almost a blend of the coquette girlies and the indie sleaze revival. But yeah, so cute, so many options to choose from, and I've been loving seeing more and more people dress like them. And I follow this creator that styles some of the cutest outfits on her dolls over on Sha Hong Shu. Probably pronouncing that wrong, I think it's also referred to as Little Red Book. So I was gonna do a Blythe doll, I think I might still do a TikTok or something, but today it feels disrespectful not to do brats considering they are my OG. Plus, I really need to style this shirt more often. I wore it recently in like a things I regret buying video and I really liked how that outfit turned out. So I don't want it to get pushed to the back of the wardrobe again. Plus, I think it's perfect for brats pretty and punk collection. There is definitely still something to be said about having a physical copy that you can actually flick through. Particularly when I am just overwhelmed, my mind feels really messy, but I'm still looking for that spark of inspiration. I really would like to invest in some more fashion and artwork coffee table books. This was something that I used to love when I was younger, but I don't know. I feel like they just aren't as easily accessible in person anymore, and they probably cost a fortune to ship. I do have some manga slash anime illustration books that I love, and again, would love to add to along with my vintage magazine collection as well. I wish that these were more accessible at thrift stores. Like does nobody donate their old magazines? And of course the elephant in the room is all the money I've spent on K-pop albums throughout the years. I am that person who will go to the bookshelf, choose one out to flick through for that day and honestly the aesthetics are insane in some of them, so definitely can get some inspo. In a shock to absolutely no one, I've decided to go for a Fritz Magazine inspired look. Not from one particular outfit, I feel like the whole point of Fritz Magazine is that the styles are so unique, so it's good just to take a general inspiration and come up with your own sort of twist. Obviously, we're not doing enough, this is just the base, it's time to layer. I'm going with a dark wash jean layered underneath. I was gonna go with just my typical chunky shoes, but I think I want these silver Mary Janes peeking out. I'm not so sure I can pull it off, but I actually think a more authentic look would be to cuff them to like a capri length. Sporty athletic outerwear runs wild in that magazine, so I'm opting for this pop of yellow with this sleeveless hoodie. My trusty beanie scarf, one of my best investment pieces last year because I wear this like crazy despite the fact that it's more of a statement piece. And to finish it all off, an animal print bag that really doesn't match at all. Trust me, I'm well aware it's not gonna be for everyone, but you cannot tell me it doesn't look like something that would grace the pages of Fruits Magazine. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I've always loved taking inspiration from characters from TV and film. And I used to do so many lookbooks featuring this, like, that was the go-to on this channel. I feel like at one point I just got a bit too burnt out and took a step back from it, but now I'm starting to miss it. So if you guys have any specific requests, please do let me know. Obviously there's a lot of popular go-tos in terms of wardrobe design, but sometimes it's fun to take inspiration from things that don't necessarily have a heavy fixation on fashion or also trying to discover films that are lesser known. Not necessarily that they aren't known at all, but just have like that kind of cult classic fan base simmering in the background. Also, you don't have to solely focus on the character's costume design. You can also just be taking inspiration from the overall color palette and the atmosphere that has been set. Some really classic examples of this are things like Wes Anderson films, Studio Ghibli, Marie Antoinette, even putting together an outfit that you think would work well under Twilight's color grading. Hopefully you can kind of already feel the vibes that I was going for. This is what I'd wear if I was in a Studio Ghibli film. I knew I wanted to wear this top, something about the sailor collar just instantly puts me in that universe. Same with this particular shade of green. Definitely going a little bit heavier on accessories than the typical Ghibli character, but I feel like everything still has that adventurer sort of vibe with the side bag and the tall boots. It really needs a hat to top it all off, but ideally I'd want it in the same brown shade and I just didn't have anything, so use your imagination. Artwork is always another great one, whether you wanna go back and interpret some of the classics, more modern pop culture, or just some of your personal favorites that you've found more recently. And honestly, an art gallery or museum date is always top tier, even if it's just solo. One of my childhood favorites though, Shirley Barber, the chokehold this woman's illustrations had on so many of us. Just the most ethereal art, mermaids, fairies, 
forest creatures. I feel like surely my mum would have kept some of the books, but I cannot for the life of me find them. But a few weeks ago when I was in store, I actually saw a calendar with some of her work. So instantly I had to have it. So originally I really wanted to style this because I think I've only ever worn it once, but it is so freaking beautiful. It's more of like a glitzy sort of fairy, I guess, with all of the sparkle to it. Honestly, I feel like I need to see if I can send it to Peach PRC because she's the only person that comes to mind on who could actually pull this off because I feel like it would look best with not actually too much underneath. Me, on the other hand, wanted to go for lots of light layers, super flowy to try and capture that almost like dainty essence. You already know because it is the exact same problem every time I try and style a fairy core outfit is the footwear. And I have heard your suggestions. My issue is I can't justify buying a new pair of shoes that will only go with this particular style because let's be real, I'm not gonna be wearing an open-toed shoe regularly. I am keeping an eye out at the op shops in case there's some sort of boot that I think would work for like a forest pixie sort of vibe. This video was genuinely so much fun to film. I really hope you enjoyed it too. And I'd love to hear what some of your favorite places to get inspo from are as well. And don't forget before you go to check out today's video sponsor, Surfshark, all the links about that exclusive deal down below in the description box. You can check me out over on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, hopefully I see you in the next video. Bye.